Here we are back in Excel. Let's open up yet another sheet. Let's go to our Data Explorer tab. And this time, let's pick From Other Sources and Windows Azure HD Insight. We're going to go ahead and enter the Azure storage account name that corresponds to the container where my HD Insight storage is located. And because that needs to be in the East US data center, it's called Blue Badge East US. We'll go ahead and click OK. And here's the storage account. Here's the container called Blue Badge. I'd like to set up a filter based both on the file name that I know I want and the folder that I know contains the authoritative version of that file. The easiest way to do this is to click the drop down arrow first next to the file name and type in the first few characters that I'm interested in. And I see this hive sample data dot txt file, and that's the one I'm interested in, so I'm going to check it. This square actually is a check mark in the Data Explorer UI. That is not a partially selected node, that is a selected node. We'll go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice that we filtered things down, but instead of having just one result, we actually have three. So I need to scroll to the right where the folder path is, and I need to uncheck Select All, scroll to the right, and take a look and see that the bottom two are actually trash folders, neither of which I'm interested in. So it's this first folder that we're interested in. And that gets us to a particular instance of the file. At this point, I can click on the double down arrow on the content column. And now I'm looking at the content of the file. Now remember I said that Data Explorer has the ability to take a single column that actually contains multiple columns worth of information and split it out. If we right click on this overall column one here and we choose split column by delimiter and we pick tab as that delimiter, then click OK, you'll see that we actually end up with a table with the data that we're interested in. There's a couple of columns I don't need here though. I don't need this column 1.1 or 1.2, nor do I need 10 and 11. I'm going to right click and choose to remove the selected columns. This should leave us with just the columns we're interested in. One more that we can remove. And at this point, I want to rename some of these columns. This data corresponds to data taken at cell towers. And so it tracks all kinds of information about the handsets with which it associated. So we know the make of the smartphone. We know the platform that it's on. We know its model number. We also know the state that the tower was in, the country that the state was in, and something called query dwell time, which tells us how long the handset was associated with that particular tower. At this point, we've done quite a bit of data shaping, and we have the data that we want. I can go ahead at this point and click on the done button and all that data comes in. And if we wait just a moment, it will be formatted as an Excel table. As you know, from the prior demo, I have the ability to unload this data from the worksheet and load it into the data model. And of course, if I want to put this data into something like power view, which requires a BI semantic model, I need that data in the model. But I want to show you one more interesting facet of PowerView now. So let's create a PowerView report on this data by going to the Insert tab and clicking on the PowerView button. Now our field list should list the various data that we've brought into this workbook. That should include both the CNBC data and the Facebook data. And it also includes the data that we just brought in from HD Insight. Now notice 
the yellow glyph is on here. That's because this data was actually selected by default. Because we had our cursor in the Excel table, back here in Sheet 6, because our cursor was there when we clicked on the Power View button, Power View knew we wanted to bring this data into a report, and of course it can't do that unless the data is added to the model. Let's be agnostic though and go to the Power Pivot window and we can see that so-called Table 6 has in fact been brought into the model. We'll notice it's called Query Swell Time. Let's see if we can fix that typo. And I do that just so we can demonstrate the fact that that model is inextricably tied to this report. And so if we click Table 6, we can add this newly changed column name back into the report from whence it came. All of this stuff is connected. The data model, Power View, Data Explorer, they all know about each other. Or I should say that Power Pivot and Power View are built in such a way where they don't need to know about Data Explorer as long as Data Explorer is aware of them and does the right thing. Now, what we can do here is set up a report that's sort of similar to the one that we had before. Let's go ahead and narrow this down to just be platform and query dwell time. We'll get rid of the other columns here. And let's change this to a column, a stack column chart like we had in our last demo. A silly little title for our report there. And down in the bottom, let's create another visualization, this time based on the model and the query dwell time. As before, we'll turn that into a line chart. And if we click on a particular platform here, we should see just the models that correspond to it. So I'll click on iPhone and we see just the iPhones. We really need good aim to get some of these other platforms like Windows Phone, but eventually we can do it. Part of the reason here is we're not able to filter. So iPhone is kind of disproportionately represented, but we could imagine, for example, bringing in country And we'll turn that into a slicer. And we'll also go ahead and add state by showing the field list, clicking over here, clicking on state, shrinking that down a little bit. And we'll change that to a slicer as well. Let's click on United States and let's click on California. We'll see lots of iPhones. On the other hand, if we go somewhere like Ohio, we see a lot more Androids. And if we click on Android, we'll just see the models that correspond to it. So let's think about what we've done here. We've used so many pieces of the Microsoft stack. We had Data Explorer talk to Windows Azure Blob Storage, which in turn was storing data built by the HD Insight distribution of Hadoop. We brought that data into an Excel workbook. We then used PowerView to visualize that data and in so doing implicitly added that data to the Excel data model. Then we went ahead and did analysis on that data. So while there is a lot of duplication between these components, there's also a lot of cooperation between them. And we really are in a position now where we can pull lots of different things together and do some really interesting work on it. And it's all centered around Excel, which of course is the focus of this course.